Hello, and welcome to Software Architecture Monday. My name is Mark Richards. I'm an independent consultant, hands-on software architect, and also the founder of developer2architect.com. In today's lesson, number 61, uh, we'll explore architectural extensibility and see how we can leverage publish and subscribe messaging to implement that kind of extensibility within our applications or architectures. Let's go through a scenario where we have, for example, an auction site, um, where similar to like eBay, where we can bid on items. And so when we bid on those, which would be the producer accepting all those bids, um, they get sent to a queue, which then we have a bid capture service, or multiple instances of those, um, being able to capture those bids to reconcile who's the winner. Um, utilizing queues in this sense is very um, uh, common to do in that case because of the FIFO order of those bids coming in. It's fairly easy to determine who actually is the winner of a particular uh, ask price. Now the problem is this. We have another requirement that we want to start tracking those bids. So everybody who's bidding, we can kind of see who's bidding and who's not and who's bidding a lot and who's bidding frequently. And so the producer says, oh, I can do that for you. And so we add another queue for that bid tracking and then modify the producer to also send those items over to that th second queue. Problem is this extensibility because now what we want to do is also analyze uh, those bids. We want to start not only tracking those but doing some bid analytics to determine um, what is the average bid price for any kind of auction context? What's the standard deviation? What are we getting from min and max and that sort of thing? And so the producer says, sure I could send you those as well. So we add a third queue and the producer is now modified to be able to send that item bid to that third queue for bid analytics. And this just continues on and on and on. When we talk about extensibility, we're talking about multiple uses of this kind of data. And do you notice what's required in point-to-point -point messaging using queues? Is the fact that not only do we have to modify our topology to continue to add new queues, but also every time we want to extend that functionality of what we want to do with those bids for that particular item, we have to modify the producer to do this. Uh, let's see how we can leverage PubSub messaging using topics to avoid this kind of change and provide architectural extensibility. And so we have the same producer. Now they're sending item bids now not to a queue but to a topic in a broadcast kind of format. And then we have a big capture service, which would be a durable subscriber, which now subscribes to that topic, a durable subscriber by the way, meaning if that big capture service goes down, uh, that message is still contained, or those messages are still contained in the topic until that subscriber comes back up. And so now this is the same topology as before, but now watch this. Because now when we start extending our functionality to say we'd like to start tracking those bids, there's no changes that need to be made in our architecture or applications at all. Because the bid tracker as a durable subscriber simply needs to subscribe to that topic the bid is already there. Same thing with the analytics, if we want to start running analytics. The point is the data is there, just go and grab it. And so now the bid analytics as a durable subscriber uh, would now subscribe to that topic as well, getting all the bids to run analytics off of those. And so with publish and subscribe messaging, you see we changed the topology, but we also now provided extensibility to really reduce, or in this case, eliminate the change needed, not only in our topology with regards to the broker and adding queues, but also the producer does not need to change for any new feature we want to add. Now, while this is a really great benefit, there are trade-offs associated with utilizing publish and subscribe messaging, rather than point-to-point -point using queues. The first of those trade-offs is security and data access control. You see on the left-hand side in point-to-point, -point, when I send something to a queue, there can be only one kind of subscriber or consumer that reads from that queue. And so I know where the data is being consumed. However, if we go to the right-hand side here on publish and subscribe, when I publish to a topic, I don't know who's actually consuming that data anybody could actually consume that. And so we do have data access control issues. There are some ways of solving and addressing this um, depending on the kind of message broker that you're using or message hub. 
um, to be able to maybe provide security credentials at the topic level. But even if we do those and bid at tracking and analytics get those, the point is that the producer is really more decoupled from how that data is actually used. And this could potentially introduce some security risk within our application and architecture. The second point is capacity and bottleneck issues, especially with durable subscribers. You see, a regular subscriber, if they go down and a message goes to the topic, that topic, that message is just disappears. And so when that subscriber comes back online, they don't see any other prior messages. However, if they want to gather everything, such as tracking or analytics, uh, they would need, or even capture for that matter, uh, they would need to be what are called durable subscribers. The problem is this, that if we start having durable subscribers on a topic, and now what happens is that those subscribers go offline for an extended period of time, those messages are accumulated within the broker. And this could present some bottleneck issues as well as capacity issues. The third trade-off is that of monitoring and queue depth. And this is really to do auto scaling based on a supervisor consumer pattern, which also is in a prior lesson, by the way, as well. And so if we look at point-to-point -point messaging with queues on the left-hand side here, I can monitor that queue depth to know if we've got too many messages pending, I can increase the number of consumers programmatically. And that's what that auto scaling is really all about. However, on the right-hand side, I do not have that ability. You see, I can't query that topic for a quote queue depth. And so therefore, I can't monitor that topic and increase uh, the number of capture services or tracking or even analytics services. So I don't have that auto scaling capability with me. And so the important thing to know in this kind of trade-off analysis is that point to point has some advantages and well as publish and subscribe. I showed you in this lesson how to leverage publish and subscribe to really produce that architectural extensibility, but nothing is free. And these are the three core trade-offs uh, that we have to take into account when choosing to use publish and subscribe messaging. For more information, I've recorded two different videos on O'Reilly, um, both on enterprise messaging, um, and these you can find at the two links here on the O'Reilly Learning Platform. I'm also the author of the Java Message Service, second edition from O'Reilly, which I provided the link there as well. All the lessons in Software Architecture Monday are hosted on my website, developer2architect.com slash lessons. And so there's plenty of lessons, five to 10 minutes, uh, that you can actually take a look at. I do offer private training as well in areas of software architecture, microservices, and also analyzing software architecture. And you can find that on my website under developer2architect.com slash training. Some of that training is public and I also have workshops and also uh, sessions at conferences that I do on a lot of this material. And you can see where I'm going to be on upcoming events, either online training or public training or even conferences by going to my website on the upcoming events page. So this has been Lesson 61, Extensibility Using PubSub Messaging. Again, my name is Mark Richards, and this has been Software Architecture Monday. Thanks so much for listening, and stay tuned in two weeks for the next lesson in software architecture. Thank you so much.